when I was a kid, I lived in a little one-story house with my dad, my older sister, and my stepmom. It was a nice and quiet place. We had hardwood floors, and there was a hallway leading from the living room into where the bedrooms were. It was a rather dark hallway, which turned to the left and led to a guest bedroom and my parents' room. It was dark since there was just a single dim light on the ceiling between the two bathrooms and the second bedroom, which was at the end of the hallway before it turned left. There was also an attic as well, right above the master bedroom's door. We never really opened it. It's weird. It just didn't feel like we had permission to, even though we did and could use it at any time. I can recall one day after school, I returned home to the house being empty. My sister was at a friend's house and my parents went out to try to surprise us with McDonald's before we came back home. I remember calling out my sister's name to see if she was home, as well as my mom and dad's name, without anyone responding. I went into my parents' room where they had a computer. I sat down and started to turn it on, hoping to get a few minutes of gaming in before my parents came back. As I sat there, the room felt like it was getting darker, but I told myself that my eyes were just adjusting to the computer monitor in front of me. The computer was taking a rather long time this time. I was maybe 10 years old at the time. I looked around the room to see if my eyes could adjust to the room, and it started to feel colder and colder, but my eyes didn't adjust. And even though the light was on and the windows were open, it was still extremely dark. That's when I looked up to see if the light was still on. When I looked up, the ceiling was completely black and the darkness shrouded the light above me like a thick black haze. Immediately, I looked back at the computer to compose myself and ignore it and I told myself that I was just a kid that was creeped out. As I focused on the monitor, the room was cold and quiet. Suddenly, a woman's voice whispered shortly and sternly my name. I could feel the wind on my ear and the pressure of someone holding my shoulder. I bolted out of the bedroom and moments later, my dad came through the front door smiling and holding a kid's meal in his hand and asking me how my day at school went. I didn't tell him what had just happened. A little while passed and my dad began having his own experiences in the house. Sometimes he would fall asleep watching his favorite TV shows on the sofa. In the middle of the night, when we had all fell asleep, he would wake up and hear footsteps walking around the living room, and he would also hear chains being dragged across the floor. At the time, we also had a dog. He said that our dog's head would follow the footsteps, and that was how he knew he wasn't imagining it. The footsteps would lead into the kitchen, pausing for a moment before something dropped from the kitchen counter. Sometimes when one of us were alone in the house, we would hear little girls giggling and laughing in the bedroom at the end of the hall. I remember my dad talking to some of the adults in a serious tone. My dad said that he would knock on the door, but there wouldn't be a reply. He could see the shadows of two people from underneath the door. It would reflect off of our hardwood floors. My dad would open the door after no reply and no one would be inside. He would then notice that he was alone in the house. This was a common incident that many of us had experienced ourselves. My stepmom didn't like children, but she hid it very well from my dad. When he would leave for work, he would work 15 to 20 hour shifts, but he always smiled when he saw us after work. Sometimes she would put me in the basement on a dog chain and said if I couldn't behave myself like a person, I would be treated like an animal. She also had these wooden paddles and she would duct tape them together and then hit us with it. She broke these paddles on numerous occasions. Each time I counted and began to notice at the 13th time, you couldn't feel it anymore. So if she hit me 80 times, like she sometimes did, then it wouldn't be so bad. This came in handy for whenever I was scared of anything that happened in the house. She also had us eat dog food and forced us to drink out of our dog's water dish. The thing about the dog chain and being downstairs is that she would turn off the lights so you would be downstairs 
and it would be completely black. It would feel like that room at the other corner of the basement was staring at me, and it felt like something was slowly creeping closer and closer to the corner of the basement where I was sitting. Sometimes I would hear feet dragging in the distance accompanied by tapping sounds familiar to fingernails tapping on the concrete floor. This only happened soon after the sun had set, and the basement was once again too dark to even see my hand waving in front of my face. As the sounds came closer and closer on the damp basement floor, the cement walls offered protection from it, and I would simply hug my legs in a fetal position. At that point, I would sing a song from Anastasia, Dancing Bears Painted Wings. My sister and I used to sing that together, and hearing my voice made me feel less alone in the situation. Even as I felt the air thicken, and the feeling of something weighing in next to me, waiting for me to open my eyes and take a look. Each time that I did manage to open my eyes, in an attempt to see what it was, it would still be so dark that I didn't know if something was there or not. I learned how to toughen up and deal with that thing by treating it like a bully. Just don't let it get to you. Don't let it bother you, I would tell myself. But the utter relief of the light turning on and being allowed to come back upstairs and watching my dad pull into the driveway was the best feeling in the world at the time. Another one of my stepmom's favorite punishments would once again be in the basement. She would have my sister and I fold the clothes from the laundry machine. She would later tell one of us to go upstairs and then proceeded to throw all of the clothes on the ground. And she would tell one of us to fold it again by ourselves. Downstairs, my sister and I knew that there was something not right with it. The room downstairs had a TV and a small, dusty sofa. The door would always be open, and it always felt like someone, or something, wanted you to come inside. It was almost magnetic. At times, we would have to go into the basement room. Whenever my stepmom had her friends over, we had to be quiet downstairs, without a peep, or else she would get upset. Due to the giggling ghosts who were upstairs, we seemed to always take the blame for it and were punished according to her mood. When I turned 12 or so, two of my dad's brothers moved into the house because of the recession. One of my uncles slept in the guest room while our other uncle slept in the basement room. Sometimes we would go downstairs to see if my uncle was hungry. When we entered the room, my uncle would be laying on the sofa with his eyes open and not blinking. Sometimes, we would go downstairs to see if my uncle was hungry. When we entered the room, my uncle would be laying on the sofa with his eyes open, not blinking, and he would be unresponsive. This would go on for a good hour or so. My dad said there wasn't anything downstairs, but he never really went downstairs. My uncle said there was something evil and that it was trying to get into his body. My other uncle, who slept in the guest bedroom, said, he fell asleep and had a dream where a Confederate soldier kept screaming without eyes that said, I took my eyes, I took my eyes. He woke up to see a floating blob of light in front of his face. I remember one night as my sister and I were falling asleep, my dad kept yelling down the hall from the living room for us to stop talking and to go to sleep. He said it a few more times before my sister and I said that we weren't talking. My dad then turned off the hallway light and said goodnight. Moments later, I opened my eyes and behind our bedroom door was a little girl in old pajamas. She had long black hair and nearly blended in with the shadows. I stared at her and then covered my head with my blanket. Later on, two of my cousins moved in after my uncles moved out. They had our old bedroom and my sister and I took the guest bedroom. My cousins were both boys, and we were supposed to help them get used to living with us. They kept fighting with each other. The youngest one would climb into my bed in the middle of the night because he didn't want to fight with his older brother. We had a lock on our bedroom door that made him feel a little better. Also, he did mention that the bedroom scared him, but I didn't ask him why. Eventually, the oldest one started to walk around the house at night. 
he would grab and hoard all the knives. We found makeshift weapons like a stick with sharp rocks on it and a strong thread with something sharp on it as well. He said he was going to kill our stepmother and everyone in the house as well. He was maybe just 12 or 13 at the time. Eventually law enforcement became involved and he was deemed insane. Once my dad found out about my stepmother's abuse, he swiftly divorced her and we moved. We never saw her again. One thing I remember is while we were moving out, the landlord stopped by and had baked us all cookies. My dad asked them if anyone died in the house. The landlords were shocked and said, yes, there was an older lady who died from depression upstairs in the attic. They then asked my dad how he knew. He then told them about our experiences. Our landlords also mentioned that the house was built on an old battleground. To this day, I drive past the house and think about knocking on the tenant's door.